Hi, art historians. Welcome back. We are in Module 14, Contemporary Art Part 3 and Art Since 1980 Part 1. So this is Contemporary Art 1945 to 1980 Part 3, 14.01, Art and Its Surroundings. So for this unit, we've got eight core works and four supplemental works. Um, the locations vary greatly, so we've got a lot of them happening in the United States. Um, the works that you're going to be taking a look at include Donald Judd's Untitled, We've got Richard Serra's Shovel Plate Prop. We've got Robert Smithson's Spiral Jetty, Walter De Maria's The Lightning Field, Anna Mendieta's Untitled Silhouette Series, Christo and John Claude's The Gates, Maya Lin's Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and Agnes Dennis' Wheat Fields for Manhattan. And then for your supplemental works, we are taking a look at Robert Morris's Body Space Motion Things and Untitled L-Beams. We have Richard Serra's Tilted Arc and Alice A. Cox's Low Building with Dirt Roof for Mary. So this era right now, we are dealing with the aftermath of World War II. And this is really fostering a shift from European dominance in art to American-led movements. Um, and this is also really reflecting the political, economic, and cultural changes that are happening around this time. Um, there is an increased awareness of environmental issues um, that is really inspiring art itself that is also directly engaging um, with landscapes and those natural materials that it centers around. Um, the artists working in this time frame are often responding to social upheaval and they're exploring themes of freedom, protest, and they're really, really definitely still challenging those traditional norms. So that habit is absolutely still continuing. Um, key, movement, key movements within this era include those like minimalism, where there's more of a focus on simplicity, form, and materiality, and absolutely rejecting uh, emotional expression and narrative. Um, we also are going to take a look at some land art or earthwork pieces, uh, which is using natural environments as the canvas itself, emphasizing the relationship between humans and nature. We are also going to take a look at site-specific art that was created for a very uh, particular location, often impossible to relocate uh, without losing its meaning or its value within the space or the context that it was placed. Um, and then we also have conceptual art, which is really stressing the idea uh, over physical artwork itself, challenging traditional art definitions. Definitions, um, which we have already been exploring thus far. So artists in this time frame are using really innovative approaches to art making as well. Um, for example, artists used industrial materials like steel, concrete, or earth, um, and they're creating works on an unprecedented scale, like really, really, really large scale, um, very much emphasizing the physical engagement aspect. And I don't know if any of you out there are also art makers, but it is really, really hard to work so large. So I'm always immediately impressed by works like this, and I also love the interactivity of these things. Um, so I absolutely am a fan of some of this stuff. Uh, many of the projects that you're going to take a look at do also require very large teams, um, integrating engineering aspects to make sure that the idea comes to fruition, um, considering the environmental science and even hiring people for manual labor itself to get the piece to come together. Um, some artworks are very intentionally temporary and really focus on experience and memory rather than permanence. Um, the artists working in this time really like to challenge institutions. They often resist traditional gallery spaces within their site-specific uh, format. And the situated works outdoors or in non-traditional settings, as I've said, is very, very common. Uh, viewers are invited to physically engage with or explore um, the artwork itself, in further enhancing ex uh, experimental quality. Um, many works are embracing natural processes like erosion and growth and decay, which questions the notion of permanence in art. And it also further emphasizes their uh, meaning and message as these uh, works tend to fade. Um, it is underlining or underscoring that message of environmental awareness when it is applicable. Um, and so these works made in this time are really reflecting a very transformative period in art where scale and environment and materials are really redefining artistic practice as well as the viewer experience. So some of the ones that you're going to take a look at, um, I've always been a huge fan of Robert Smithson. I do want to get out to see Spiral Jetty at one point in my life. It is on my list of things to do. Um, I love this piece because it is something that you can interact with, but it is also dependent on the tides. Um, the pictures that you see are so beautiful, and there is a full-length movie that was also made, um, which demonstrates the process for how this piece actually came to fruition.
I have always been the biggest fan of Jean-Claude and Christelle. I think they are just like the most dynamic duo in all of art history. Um, the one that you're going to take a look at, The Gates, is actually staged in Central Park. And this is something that was very temporary, but it really called attention to the park space, which I think is really special because it's actually pretty amazing that in the midst of New York City, we do have a pretty large scale environmental site. Um, and so calling attention to that and maybe pulling people out of their kind of daily, uh, you know, uh, 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 path or routine and just to take a moment to appreciate the world around us, um, and appreciate artwork around us. And then of course, you're going to take a look at my Lynn's Vietnam Veterans Memorial. I did go see this, but it was probably a, about 10 years ago at this point. So I don't have any pictures of it for myself, but, um, you'll also take a look at Richard Serra's art, who was really, really cool. And I've got a picture there in the Carpino corner. So enjoy the first half of module 14 and I will see you again for the second half very soon. Bye everyone.